Welcome to Training the Accidental Trainer. My name is Heather and I will be your guide through this mini lecture. The structure of this training session is based on a modified version of the Understanding by Design Planning Framework created by Grant Wiggins and Jay McTeague. Essentially, the framework has three stages. Identify desired results, determine acceptable evidence, and plan learning experiences and instruction. Stage one includes figuring out what you want your students to learn and setting goals for yourself related to the session. Some of the goals for this session, for example, are teaching the adult basics of adult learning, explaining how to avoid lecturing, and sharing some active learning principles. Those are just some of my goals, and in a minute we'll talk about setting learning objectives. Once you know what you want to teach, you can set some objectives, what you want the students to know or be able to do after the session is over. The best way to develop objectives, in my opinion, is to use the SMART method for setting objectives. That This way you'll ensure that each one is very specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. For example, one of the objectives I have set for this class is, by the end of this course, the student will be able to clearly articulate the goals of their training session, as well as the big ideas and learning objectives. This objective is specific. I can measure it by reviewing the goals, the big ideas, and the objectives. It is an objective that students can achieve, and it is directly related to the session. And finally, it's time bound because I start the objective with by the end of this course. Something else to consider when creating objectives is the rigor of the objective. To help teachers set learning objectives, Benjamin Bloom created a taxonomy in 1956 that classified objectives based on six levels of complexity. In the 1990s, a group of cognitive psychologists got together and updated the taxonomy to suit the needs of today's teachers and students. So here are the levels of complexity. Remembering, can the student recall information? Understanding, can the students explain ideas or concepts? Applying, can the student use the information in a new way? Analyzing. Can the student distinguish between the different parts? Evaluating. Can the student justify a stand or decision? Creating. Can the student create a new product or point of view? Here's an example of an objective that can be classified at the applying level of the taxonomy. By the end of this course, the student will be able to use the version of the Understanding by Design framework shared with the student during the training session to develop a course or a session or a series plan of teaching and learning. Here's an example of an objective that's more co complex and can probably be classified as creating. By the end of this course, the student will be able to create assessments that demonstrate that their students understand the objectives and content of the training sessions. The next stage of understanding by design is determine acceptable evidence, otherwise known as developing assessments. How will you know that your students know and understand what was covered during the session? There are many kinds of assessment, and often assessments are referred to by many different names. For the purpose of this presentation, we'll look at three types of assessment. Diagnostic. This type of assessment is given before a session takes place. It provides the teacher with a clear indication of what students know before the session begins and helps the teacher to plan instructional activities that start from where the students are, in other words, their current level of competency. Formative. This type of assessment occurs during the session. Example, uh, examples of formative assessment include observation, thumbs up, thumbs down, ungraded quizzes or polls, question and answer sessions, and self-assessments. Summative. This type of assessment is given when the session is over. 
It includes things like final exams or final quizzes, or evaluations of projects, or evaluations of student presentations. Next, we need to look at Stage 3 of the framework. In Stage 3, you reflect upon your goals, objectives, and assessments, and then develop the learning activities and instructional strategies you're going to use. You answer this question, how are you going to help your students learn? The Where To framework can help with the development of activities. It's an evaluation method that helps teachers to decide if a learning plan is going to be effective or not. Where To stands for Where. Do the students know where the session is going? Does the teacher know where the students are coming from? Hook. How will you engage the students and hold their interest? Equip. How will you help students experience key ideas and explore issues? Rethink. Revise. How will you help students refine their understandings and revise their work? Evaluate. How will you help students to evaluate their work? Tailor. How is the learning plan tailored to different, different needs, interests, and abilities? In other words, how is the learning plan differentiated for those different needs, interests, and abilities? Organize. Are the activities organized logically, and will they help to keep students engaged? A lot of what we just talked about involves knowing about your students. Who are they? What do they already know? Will they like the activities you've chosen? One way to find out more about your students is to send a pre-session survey. Another way is to ask them to do a diagnostic assessment before the session begins. Remember to allow yourself enough time to analyze the results, though. Here are some basic learning principles that were first described by Malcolm Knowles in the 1970s. First, adults are internally motivated and self-directed. Second, adults bring life experiences and knowledge to learning experiences. Third, adults are goal-oriented. Fourth, adults are relevancy-oriented. Fifth, adults are practical. And finally, adult learners like to be respected. These are general principles to consider, of course, and there will be adult learners in your class who do not exhibit these traits. Active learning is presented in contrast to passive learning. Right now, you are engaged in passive learning. There are certainly times in which we need to engage in passive learning when we need to listen rather than do and watch rather than present. However, if an entire session is like that, it can get boring very quickly. Adults like to be active, so it's important that you design sessions that get your students thinking, moving, working together, and talking. It will promote uh, deeper learning and students will retain more of the material covered in class. Here are some examples of active learning activities. We're going to work through them in a while, and you're going to do research to find some more. Now it's time for you to start working on your course plan. Have fun with this, enjoy, and thanks for listening.